Okay, you guys, so we are going over chapter 13, which is advanced topics and treatments. Like I said, this is going to be quite long chapter and we are going to start, this is our last chapter. So we're on page 641 and we are working out of our big standard My Lady book, all right? So on page 641, it says, explain advanced skincare topics and treatments for licensed trained estheticians. Understanding the foundations of the equipment, indications, and contraindications will enable you to employ combination therapies that will yield greater results and client satisfaction. Please highlight the following and put a star next to it. Advanced treatments have expanded the esthetician's repertoire to include more result-driven treatments such as chemical exfoliation, microdermabrasion, microcurrent, ultrasound, and light emitting diode, also known as LED, estheticians should study and have a thorough understanding of advanced topics and treatments because advanced machines technology is always being developed and improved upon and some of these technologies are expansions from the original formats. Offering advanced treatments will keep technicians competitive in the marketplace and the esthetician's professional expertise in analyzing the skin and recommending the best programs helps make these procedures safe and also very effective. We're on page 642. So describe chemical exfoliation and peels. Please highlight those first two paragraphs. What is chemical exfoliation? In the field of skincare, we define the process of removing excess accumulation of dead skin cells from the corneum layer of the epidermis as superficial peeling, okay? Exfoliation, keratolysis, and desquamation. These are interchangeable terms, okay? This process can be uh, accomplished mechanically via a microdermabrasion machine, manually with the use of scrubs, or chemically with the use of specific products such as enzyme peels, alpha hydroxy acids, and beta hydroxy acids, which are BHAs. Light gesturers and light trichloroacetic acid, also known as TCA peels, formulated to achieve this result. Advanced training and certifications are necessary to perform exfoliating treatments and peels. Peels and chemical exfoliation services are efficient and take less time than the more relaxing in-depth facial. Peels and chemical exfoliation services yield more significant results, help produce a clinical change in the skin, and are commonly used to address photoaging, acne, and hyperpigmentation in addition to other conditions. So. It's very true. So during a chemical peel service, usually the client will be in your office no longer than, I would just say 45 minutes. It can take anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes. So it will not be that lengthy hour uh, facial that they're probably used to, okay? Chemical exfoliation and chemical peels come in many different formulations and strengths. The regulatory agency will determine the guidelines regarding the strength and pH of the product you can use. You will determine the treatment protocol, including the type of acid, the procedure time, and the strength, the application process, and the assisting ingredients. Protocols vary depending on the product line, but the basic process consists of applying the product, neutralizing, and removing it within a few minutes. Some peels do not require neutralizing as they are self-neutralizing, okay? Now, you guys have heard me mention this several times, that if you do plan on offering chemical peels as a service in your practice, you have to do continuing education. Now, us going over this chapter, chapter 13, is simply giving you the foundations, okay? The foundations of what the process is like. But you definitely need continuing education 
from a reputable brand that you believe you would like to use. There's many out there. Of course, I've shared with you guys that I do work with Glymed Plus, but there's other brands out there. PCA is another very good um, brand that a lot of SDs use for chemical peels. And if you are interested, of course, you would want to get more information from the actual company. Okay. Acid, alkaline, and pH relationships. So to understand the strength of peels in the different formulations, it is important to understand acid, alkaline, and pH relationships. pH is an especially important consideration in peel products, okay? So acids have a pH of zero to six, okay? Neutral would be seven. Alkalines range from eight to 14. We're on page 643 at the top. The average pH of skin is 5.0, okay? Typically between 4.5 to 5.5. Acids penetrate the skin and can be a cause of irritation because of their small molecular size. A pH of less than three is not recommended for salon peels, and most states do not allow the use of a lower pH. Please highlight where it says buffering agents. Buffering agents are ingredients added to products to help make them less irritating, okay? So uh, an example, this is only an example, <clears throat> especially if you're working with an enzyme peel, I'm gonna use an enzyme peel as an example. If you're working with an enzyme peel that is a little bit more spicy, we'll call it spicy, and you're working with a client that perhaps has more of a sensitive skin type, then you can mix that enzyme with a mask to make it less irritating. So that means that you are using that mask as a buffering agent. Again, that's just an example. Products with a higher acid percentage and a lower pH are more irritating. The acid needs to have a pH lower than the skin's pH in order for it to be effective. So if our skin's natural pH is anywhere between 4.5 to 5.5, if I am applying a acid that its pH is a four, okay, will, will it be effective? You know, probably not. That means it's not going to really irritate my skin or cause that peeling that perhaps I am looking for, okay? Obviously we work with, um, skin script when it comes to a lot of the enzyme peels and skin script has a variety of different enzymes so you would obviously rather choose something that you don't have to buffer right they have some that are very mild and then they have some that have a very high tingle factor okay so put it into perspective a small level a 30% concentration of glycolic acid is usually formulated to have a pH of three if it is buffered properly. Physicians' peels have a higher percentage concentration and a lower pH. Over-the-counter AHA home care products formulations contain from two to 15% acids. AHA home care products formulations sold by spas range from five to 10% in acid. Physicians carry home care products with higher percentages of acids. So peels are sometimes used to restore the skin's natural glow, which can be inhibited by hyperkeratinized skin and skin that is not functioning optimally at the physiological level, right? So the cell renewal factor, also known as CRF, and migration from the dermis to the top of the epidermis. This process, we know that it slows down with age, right? So please highlight that and put a star next to it. The average rate of cell turnover rate for babies, we know that it's 14 days. For teenagers, 21 to 28 days. For adults, 28 to 42 days. And for those 50 and older, okay, anywhere between 42 to 84 days keeping cell mitosis going is one of the goals of skin preservation. So if you ever have a client, why chemical peel, right? We want to keep our skin going no matter the age. Right. 
Factors influencing the CRF include genetics and natural environment, right? So, and one's medical history, the lifestyle, personal care, and exfoliation method. Please highlight the following and put a star next to it. The keratinized corneum layer is composed of approximately 15 to 20 layers and varies in thickness in different body areas. So while exfoliating is great for the skin, a hydrolipidic balance must be maintained, especially for alipidic, meaning drier skin. Overpeeling can be detrimental to the skin and monitoring the client during treatment is very imperative. It's very important, right? Let's go on to the next page. Page 644 at the top, light, medium, and deep peels. What is the difference? So superficial peeling removes cells from only the stratum corneum. Superficial or light peels, chemical exfoliators, are esthetician administered and generally, okay, according to the state mandated licensing scope of practice, include enzymes, glycolic acid, which are 30% or less, lactic acid, again, 30% or less, and in some cases, Jessner solution and low percentage of TCA, one to three layers, okay? The term chemical exfoliation is sometimes used in place of the word peel to differentiate between the medium and deeper clinical peels and the lighter chemical exfoliation used in spas, okay? So for example, you cannot use a 40% or a 50% TCA. That will be considered a deep peel and can only be administered by a physician, okay? Physicians use high strength peels formulations that are designed to penetrate deeper into the skin, the dermal layer. These peels are commonly referred to as medium or deep peels. Peel, peels administered by physicians make use of the following chemicals. Resorcinol, phenol, okay, trichloracidic acid, which is again TCA, glycolic acid, 50% or more, okay? As an SD, you wanna stay at 30. Jessner's peels, four to 10 layers, which contain lactic acid, salicylic acid, and resorcinol in an ethanol solvent. TCA, a medium depth peel that removes the epidermis down to the dermis. Then you have phenol, a highly acidic deep peel that peels down into the dermis. This peel is not commonly used, but it's still important to be aware of. We're on page 645 at the top. Medium depth peels are performed primarily with stronger TCA concentrations by physicians to remove the entire epidermis and part of the papillary dermis. Although not used often, you guys, deep peels are performed primarily with a phenol solution by physicians to peel deep within the dermis. There has been a movement towards the use of ablative lasers, okay, versus deep peeling solutions due to the ability to control the depth of the procedure with the former method. So with lasers, you can limit the number of passes, but peel solutions may penetrate beyond the desired depth, okay? So general effects of chemical exfoliation and peels. Peels and chemical exfoliations result in the following. It improved texture of the skin, barrier function, and moisture retention. Increased cell renewal factor, hydration, and, and intercellular lipids. Reduce fine lines, wrinkles, surface pigmentation. Skin that looks and feels smoother and softer. Improves skin conditions such as acne, hyperpigmentation, clogged pores, and also dry skin. Potential stimulation of elastin and collagen production. And we love all of that, right? So keep in mind that the more intense the peel, the better the result. But you must also use caution to avoid complications because it can happen. The client should also be made aware of the difference in downtime as it pertains to obviously the peel's intensity, okay? 
but have to be aware of how long it could take. Some peels are very mild that they usually just have like mild flakiness. It's not very noticeable, but then you have other peels where the client will actually have a lot of peeling and the downtime could be up to seven to even 10 days, okay? General contraindications to precautions for chemical exfoliation and peels. So exfoliated skin needs to be protected from sun exposure, big, big, big deal. And tanning to avoid hyperpigmentation and damage to the skin. Sunscreen must be used daily when using AHAs. Again, AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acids or other strong exfoliating products or treatments. Chemical exfoliation and peels can result in burns that may require medical attention and can scar a client. Most definitely, if you are using a peel that is way too strong and it's not appropriate for your client's skin, you can harm and actually burn the client's skin. It is important to obtain as much training as possible in working with chemicals. And that is why I suggest 1000% continuing education when it comes to peels. Consult with the client before applying a chemical exfoliant. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and whenever possible, perform a patch test in the inner arm, inner wrist, inside crease of the elbows or behind the ears, anywhere between 24 to 48 hours before giving a treatment to watch for adverse reactions to the product, okay? We're on page 646 at the top. Chemical exfoliation contraindications include the following. Recent cosmetic surgeries, if your client has had any laser resurfacing, or if a client perhaps went and got a chemical peel somewhere else by another SD or dermabrasion. Uh, if they had any recent injectables such as fillers, Botox, okay? The use of Retin-A or other medication that already exfoliates and thins the skin, okay? That would be a no. Allergies or sensitivities to products or certain ingredients. If a client is pregnant, okay? Active herpes simplex hyperpigmentation tendencies, inflamed rosacea or acne, infectious disease, open sores or any suspicious lesions, sunburn or irritated skin, okay? If they're taking any type of photosynthesizing medication that makes the skin very sensitive to the sun, that would be a no. Other contraindicated drugs or obviously other medication. So, so to prevent skin damage, warn your clients to avoid sun exposure, scrubs, rubbing, pulling the dead skin, depletories, waxing, benzoyl peroxide, and exfoliating or glycolic acid products uh, for at least 24 to 48 hours before or after any chemical exfoliation procedure. Recommend a longer period of time if the client's condition warrants it, okay? So yes, most definitely, you have to ask a lot of questions. Sometimes it is safe to have a separate consent form when it comes to chemical exfoliation. So you can have all these questions, all the contraindications in your questionnaire. Identify how to safely and effectively use chemical exfoliation and peels. It is important to identify the steps of chemical exfoliation and peels available in the market today and to understand the benefits and contraindications of each. So let's talk about enzymes, okay? What is an enzyme peel? Enzyme treatments are often referred to as enzyme peels or an enzyme mask, whereas physical exfoli uh, exfoliants work to slither off dead, dead cells sitting on the surface of the skin. Please highlight all of this, it's all very important. Enzymes are proteolytic in nature and work to digest the keratin, which is the protein in dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. Enzyme treatments, depending on their composition and your client's skin, can be gentle enough to repeat once a week. You will find that most clinical facials include the use of enzyme mask for enhanced exfoliation and to assist in, in preparing the skin for easier extractions. 
enzymes can also be combined with microdermabrasion, which you guys have heard me mention that before, may be referred to as a microdermabrasion peel combination, LED, and many other advanced treatments to prepare the skin to yield greater results and or enhance the exfoliation process. You will find that enzyme treatments come in a couple of different forms, such as ready to use mask or a powder with a liquid activator that you need to mix just prior to the application. So obviously we use a lot of um, skin scripts and you guys know that those are ready to use. You do not need to mix anything um, to get it ready. So ingredients found in enzyme include the following. Bromelain, which is derived from pineapples, papain, which is derived from papaya fruit, uh, pancreatin. Obviously, you always want to follow the manufacturer's directions for mixing, applying, and removing any enzyme treatments. Usually, most enzymes do not stay on the face for no longer than 10 minutes. Some of them will even say uh, five minutes. Okay, one second. Um, yeah, so if you are going to be using an enzyme peel, you would skip your, your granular scrub. So it would be in replace of, okay? So when to use enzymes. So when determining whether a treatment is appropriate for a client, consider the following factors. Skin type, sebaceous gland activity, skin condition, the client's philosophy of sun exposure, their cosmetic uh, and product use, and whether they are using Retin-A or other AHAs and or acne drugs such as tetracycline or doxycycline. Enzyme peels can be applied once every one to two weeks, but are usually used in conjunction with a clinical facial or to prepare for a, a more advanced treatment such as microdermabrasion, ultrasound, or LED. Enzymes are not typically used prior to a chemical peel, okay? So you wouldn't use it the same day, for example, okay? You can use it leading up to a chemical peel, but not combined with a peel, okay? Effects of an enzyme peel. So the results are very superficial, okay? Temporary and provide a refreshed, dewy complexion, but none of the in-depth clinical changes, such as those that you will see like with an AHA or a BHA, okay? A just nurse or obviously a TCA peel. Because most solutions will be in the form of a mask, you may be unable to see the skin's response and you will rely on information obtained from the client to determine if the mask is processing according to uh, expectations, okay? If you are applying a mask, you can see the skin through it. It is expected to initially uh, to initially see the skin experience a very light uh, arrhythmia or even a, you know, it'll turn a little pink, slightly red. The client may experience minimal or no tingling, okay, at all. It just depends on which enzyme you are using. While the solution is actively processing, you're looking for pinkness, not redness, not a lot of redness, but some clients do tend to get a little red, okay? As this is an enzyme peel, okay? Next page, page 648 at the top. So contraindications also follow with best practices for enzyme peels. Remember to always consult the manufacturer's instructions. So you guys, if it says to leave it on for five minutes, don't leave it on for 15, okay? Like, follow the instructions. Eyewear is always recommended to protect the client and the technician. OSHA requires that any time a corrosive agent is used, the technician must wear protective eyewear with side shields, okay? The manufacturer will provide instructions on the application and the removal process. The general application process for a basic enzyme peel involves cleansing, toning, applying the enzyme peel, processing according to the instructions, rinsing and applying moisturizer, and of course, um, SPF. Some areas of the face may process sooner than others, and you may need to perform spot removal on those areas. Some clients' entire face may process sooner than the manufacturer's recommended minimal processing time, in which case you will need to remove the entire peel immediately. 
okay? The best rule of thumb as a new esthetician who may not yet have mastered efficient application and removal process, it is to be prepared to remove the peel just prior to reaching the end point to ensure that you can complete neutralization and removal before the client becomes overprocessed. That is true. It is also recommended to have a closed container of extra four by fours, moistened aesthetic wipes available for use if needed, as you will need them readily and accessible, right? So you have to move quickly. So because this is an enzyme, right? You want to make sure that the application is done correctly at a very good pace. So you don't wanna be very, very slow and take your time, absolutely not. You wanna move quick, you wanna apply it efficiently, well applied, and you also wanna make sure that you remove it just as fast, okay? So you wanna make sure that you have everything that you need um, ready to go, okay? What is an AHA or a BHA peel? Alpha hydroxy acids are mild acids that come in different percentages and pH levels and help to dissolve the desmosomes between cells to keep the skin exfoliated. AHAs penetrate the corneum via the intercellular matrix and loosens the bonds between the cells. The intercellular matrix between the skin cells consists of ceramides, lipids, glycoproteins, and active enzymes. AHAs also stimulate the production of intercellular lipids. Glycolic acid, a commonly used AHA, can penetrate the epidermis more effectively because it has a, um, the smallest molecular size of the AHAs. Follow the light glycolic peel procedure that is described in procedure 13.3 later in the chapter. Most AHA peels uh, you will use will not be at a level that will yield any peeling or flaking, okay? So AHAs include the following. Glycolic acid, which is derived from sugar cane, and it is the strongest of the AHAs. You have lactic acid, which is derived from milk. Lactic acid is amazing for drier skin types, okay? Then you have tartric acid, which is derived from grapes. Malic acid is derived from apples. Malic is also very good for pigmentation. Citric acid is derived from citrus fruits, okay? Um, mandelic acid is derived from uh, bitter, bitter almond, also very good for pigmentation. So, BHA works under the same premises as AHAs. BHA meaning beta hydroxy acids, okay, but are better suited to dissolve oil and are primarily used for oily skin and acne. You will find that BHA peels are usually stronger than AHA peels, but this will depend on the chemical formulation, right? You may encounter some slight flaking, or mild peeling, depending on the strength of the BHA peel. Please highlight and put a star next to the following. BHAs include salicylic acid, which is derived from sweet birch, willow bark, and winter's green, and has an antiseptic and an anti-inflammatory properties. So, what do you get out of this, you guys? Please make a note of this. You are welcome to write on your book. So AHA, you can consider it to be a water-loving acid, okay? It basically works by melting the intercellular glue that holds those dead skin cells together, okay? The effects are only felt on the skin surface and it's very good for sun damage and dry skin. AHAs. BHAs, on the other hand, is an oil, okay, an oil-loving acid, and it works by cutting through oil that, that clogs the pores, okay, that clogs the pores, and what it does, it normalizes the lining of the pore under the skin, under the skin surface that contribute to acne. That's what BHA does okay and the most commonly ones used is obviously salicylic acid okay so i hope 
that helps. I gave you guys several handouts um, that last week that have a lot of this information and um, we can go over this obviously in person because it's, it's, it's obviously very, very good stuff. I want you guys to keep it in your, in your, in your binder, okay? So when to use AHA peels? You guys, so when determining whether an AHA peel treatment is appropriate for your client, consider the following factors. Again, skin type, sebaceous gland activity, skin conditions, same thing. You know, how often is your client exposed to sun? Are they using any other products at home? Any uh, acne medication? So basically the same, um, same as you would with, with an enzyme, okay? So again, that's on page 649. Now, let's skip over to 650, where it says, in the maintenance phase, you maintain the results by administering a monthly maintenance peel. You may also boost progress throughout the year by adding a series when, a series when desired. An example would be to schedule a series every fall to address any summer photo damage. That is absolutely true. I have shared with you guys that you do not peel all year long. I know you guys remember that conversation. Okay, you do not peel all year long, especially in the summertime. So you have to make sure that your clients understand that there is maintenance and upkeep. Getting one chemical peel is not going to take care of 10, 5, 20 years of sun damage. It takes maintenance, all right? And it takes proper care on using the correct at-home care products and also coming in for routine facials, okay? Some technicians' treatments plans work on a graduated peeling uh, system where you start with the mildest level peel, such as a 2% lactic acid, for example, for the first couple of peels in the series and then move up to a low dose of glycolic acid, working up to maybe a 20% glycolic and then adding excuse me, and then ending up with a 30% glycolic acid. So again, you do not just start your client with the strongest peel that you offer in your treatment room, right? You want to graduate them to that. Stronger superficial peeling uh, treatments plans are administered to clients whose skin is cleared for this level, okay, of peeling and to those who want to achieve faster results or have conditions that are better addressed with a stronger superficial peel, such as severe sun damage, more in um, depth, age-related skin issues, or hyperpigmentation. An example is a series of 5% TCA peels, once every three to four weeks, or 10% TCA once every four weeks, which sounds really good to me, when working at this advanced level, the technician, meaning you, need to be very diligent in monitoring progress to ensure that they are administering the next peel only well after the skin has obviously recovered. You do not want to peel too soon. I repeat, you do not want to peel too soon, okay? You wanna make sure that they have recovered from the previous peel. Client's input is paramount. It's very, very important. Photo documentation, you guys, before and after peels and during the series is necessary, okay? It is obviously good business practice for your personal record, and it is also beneficial um, documentation of the client's progress. Important reminder, peel schedules depend on the product strength and the client's tolerance of the procedure, okay? Oh, that's a lot of information, but it's so good. And I hope that it's making sense, okay? When to use BHAs. So we talked about alpha hydroxy acids. Now we are going to talk about BHAs. So pre-treatment and home care guidelines are the same as of for AHAs, okay? But you may need to add in products uh, specifically for clients with oilier skin and with acne. So for example, an acne and blemish serum. BHAs are used primarily on clients with oilier skin. I just mentioned that and with acne. So you will find these peels usually come in strengths of 20 and 30% and are much stronger than AHAs. So you will most likely administer the peels only once every two or, uh, or more weeks. 
clients will notice flaking and peeling. So it is important to mention this in the consultation. It is advisable to start with the lower strength and of course work yourself up uh, and have a baseline for the client's reaction to the procedure. A series can be implemented according to your client's goals and the outcomes achieved. The maintenance phase begins once the goal has been met and you want to maintain the result. So if your client comes in, they get a series of maybe three peels, maybe six to seven weeks apart, and then they stop coming to you, okay? They stop taking care of their skin and then boom, what happens? They're going to end up right back where they were, all right? It is very important that they understand that it's a process and there's definitely levels to this, right? So on page 651 at the top, again, contraindications, best practices for both AHAs and BHAs. Please highlight and put a star where it says, before a chemical exfoliation service, discuss potential issues and contraindications during the client's consultation. Explain the procedure, expected outcomes, and realistic goals, right? You have to have realistic goals. In a diagnostic facial or skin analysis before scheduling treatment, note on the client's intake form the condition of the skin, including dehydration, hyperpigmentation, if you see any open lesions, and any other type of skin condition. Also choose the type of exfoliant based on the condition of the client's skin and the desired results. Always keep in mind the manufacturer's instructions throughout the process and while performing the peel consultation. Again, you want to wear eyewear, right? Eyewear is recommended to protect the client and yourself. Other precautions may be taken, such as applying occlusive barrier to the corners of the eyes, the mouth, and around the nostril area. So that area is very, very, very sensitive. You can use something like a protective balm um, or Vaseline. All right. Because the sun is stronger during the summer, okay, and outdoor exposure is more frequent. Chemical exfoliation and other exfoliation procedures like microdermabrasion should be used with extreme caution during those months and should be avoided in some cases where the client is not willing to take precautions to avoid uh, imminent exposure during these um, their daily activities. It's like someone telling you, oh yes, I want a chemical peel, but in about a week or two, I'm gonna be taking a trip to Hawaii. Like girl, no, All right? We'll just wait until you get back and you're gonna be indoors. The manufacturer will provide instructions on the application and removal process, okay? General application, again, for basic peels involve cleansing, toning, applying the peel, processing according to the uh, instructions, neutralizing, again, depends on what kind of peel you are using. During the application, there will be a slight stinging and tingling that you may want to provide a client with the fan okay, to cool the face during the application, okay? Put a star next to the following. During the neutralizing or rinsing step, the peel may temporarily, you guys, reactivate, okay? Reactivate for a few seconds because of the water, okay? Rehydrating the peel, and the client may experience an increased tingling or stinging sensation, that's a fact, okay? Immediately after application, the client will have a rosy glow and even mild arrhythma of the skin, okay? With a BHA peel, there may be a salicylic crystal resi residual residue present, which should not be confused with frosting, okay? And I gave you guys in the handouts that I gave you, uh, there's some information on what is frosting and what is crystallization and um, okay so let's go over that so crystallization a crystal residue of salicylic acid that accumulates on the surface of the skin and can be wiped away although it's very fine in texture these crystals can be seen when using something like a just nurse or um, salicylic solutions, okay? Now, when it's a frosting, you guys, frosting is when parts of your skin turns white during a chemical peel. This indicates that protein conjugation has occurred and it is basically the clinical stopping point. 
Once you see that your client has frosted, that means you need to stop and do not go over that area, okay? It can happen with uh, TCA peels. Let's you know again when the peel has reached its death level and it's again the clinical end point, okay? Do not go over frost, okay? It can appear after the peel, uh, after the peel has self-neutralized, so it's very common. Again, I gave you guys handouts over all of this, so I hope you have them and you keep them with you forever and ever, okay? All right, let's move on to the next page, page 652. Um, what does it say? Sometimes a Woods lamp is used with BHA applications to view the accuracy and evenness of the peel application as the peel can be um, illuminated by the lamp. Oh, that would be really cool to do. Yeah, definitely. Okay, what is a Jessner's or a TCA peel? So a Jessner's peel is categorized as a stronger superficial peel and uh, utilizes a Jessner solution. So what is it? It's basically a mixture of salicylic acid, resorcinol, lactic acid, and ethanol. You may find some of these formulas contain 2% uh, phenol. Trichloracidic acid peels are also known as TCA peels. Some states allow estheticians to perform superficial peeling with a Jessner's or a TCA. These peels are achieved at the superficial level by applying low percentages and you applying fewer layers, okay? Then we are found with uh, obviously a more medium level peeling performed by a doctor, okay? So if a doctor is allowed to do up to four or five layers, perhaps you as an SD can only do two, which removes the entire epidermis and part of the papillary dermis. So both Jessner's and TCA peels work on the premise of protein conjugation. Therefore, there will be flaking and peeling. How much peeling will depend on the intensity of the peel and the client? These peels are not neutralized and sometimes may remain on the face. With the client rinsing the residue off several hours later, clients must be direct, directed right, to follow all home care regimens to ensure optimal outcomes and to minimize uh, complications. Yeah, so if you're working with, I'm just gonna say a TCA peel, TCAs uh, are usually self-neutralized. I've given myself a chemical peel before. I've done 15% TCA, and yes, it does get spicy. I believe I did two layers on my, two to three, I can think. I think it was two layers on my face. And right immediately, yes, you guys, it is spicy. I had to have two fans on my face. And usually, um, if you're going to be doing multiple layers, again, you can do two to three, um, you wait at least three to four minutes in between each layer. And once you are done, you definitely feel like your face is a little red. Um, you feel some tightness. And I actually did not start experiencing actual peeling until I want to say day, day three, okay, about day three. And usually clients always peel around their mouth and that's just from facial expressions and obviously when we're uh, talking, right? So, and I did peel for about seven days, okay? So there is a little downtime, so your clients need to be aware. If you are going to be performing these type of chemical peels, your clients need to again commit and perhaps they need to purchase from you a home care regimen, okay? Or products that they need to use at home, okay? And of course, moisturizer and uh, sunscreen will always be part of that home care treatment. When to use Jessner's and TCA peels? We're still on page 652. So when determining whether a specific treatment is appropriate for a client, consider the following factors. Again, skin type, sebaceous gland activities, the same as the others, okay? So I'm not gonna read every single thing. Um, Pre-treatment and home care guidelines are the same as those with AHAs, but may add in products specifically to address aging or sun damage 
such as antioxidants or skin lightening agents. So for those who have oilier and acneic skin, you may add in a product such as an acne or blemish serum. Jessner's peels are primarily used on clients with oilier skin and acne, but are also used to address sun damage. The Jessner solution is usually applied in several layers, according to the manufacturer's direction. You will find these peels um, are much stronger than AHA, so you will most likely administer the peels only once every three to four or even more weeks. Again, client will notice flaking and peeling, so it is important to mention this during the consultation. TCA peels are primarily for clients experiencing aging and sun damage. The TCA solution is usually applied in several layers, which is what I just mentioned, uh, according again to the manufacturer's directions. You'll find these peels are much stronger than AHAs, so you will most likely administer the peels only once every three to four weeks or more. Clients will notice some flaking and peeling. Again, you will let them know ahead of time, okay? It is advisable to start with the lower strength and of course, working yourself up. So again, same as the other peels, okay? Contraindications and um, best practices for gestures and TCA, you guys, it'll be the exact same thing as the other peels. So we're going to skip over that, okay? That's on page 653. You guys, all of this here, um, it's the exact same as the BHAs and the AHAs. What is a designer peel? So to yield more targeted results, additional ingredients may be added to formulas, including pigment lighteners, acne ingredients, and moisturizers or hydrators, okay? Look at the chart on page 654. This chart is awesome, okay? So it says, beneficial ingredients to combine with chemical exfoliation. So on the first one, it says, skin condition, mature and or sensitive skin, beneficial ingredients. So what are those? Glycolic acid, lactic acid, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, phospholipids, linoleic acid, aloe vera, allantoin, kojic acid, licorice root, peptides, Hyperpigmentation is our next one. Glycolic acid, kojic acid, licorice root, mulberry extract, bearberry extract, azelaic acid, and ascorbic acid. Acne, glycolic, lactic, salicylic, azelaic acid, and citric acid. So that chart is awesome, okay? We're on page 655. Discuss the benefits of microdermabrasion by type of device. I know you guys have been looking forward to this, so I cannot wait to show you guys um, how to perform the microderm. And we will do that very soon. And um, you guys will really enjoy performing this treatment. Okay, so microdermabrasion is a machine-based exfoliation treatment that uses a crystal spray, okay, or diamond tips to gently polish dead skin cells from the skin surface. Today, many microdermabrasion models are available for use by estheticians and physicians. Physician grade machines typically consist of a stronger vacuum setting and more abrasive diamond tips, okay? All right, crystal microdermabrasion. So, the crystal microdermabrasion procedure, you guys, is achieved by spraying high-grade microcrystals composed of uh, corundum, okay, powder, uh, aluminum oxide, or a similar abrasive material across the skin surface through a hand piece. The crystal microdermabrasion technique is similar to running the vacuum suction machine across the face. Crystals are first sprayed on, okay, the skin through the handpiece and then are vacuumed off simultaneously. Because not all crystals are removed by the vacuum, this treatment is considered a little bit messy and requires additional cleanup for you, the esthetician. The used crystals are collected in a collection tube and must be disposed of according to the biohazard cleanup process recommended by the machine manufacturer. Crystals can also be used manually, okay, without the machine. This process is considered more gentle on the skin 
and it is called manual microdermabrasion. Oh my goodness, I cannot remember the product that Glymed has that it's basically a manual microderm, but um, oh, I can think of the name, but I have it. I have to bring it to show you guys. But anyways, um, that is talking about the crystal microderm machine. Okay. Crystal free microdermabrasion. So the crystal free microdermabrasion technique consists of a diamond tip, okay, applicator that gently polishes away the upper layer of the skin without the use of messy crystals and has gained popularity, you guys, over the crystal option as it yields the same result without the cleanup or expense of crystals. Okay, so again, on later in the chapter, there's different procedures that is going um, that you can go over. So, so the crystal, crystal machine, and then there's the crystal free machine, and the crystal free machine is the one that we have here, which is using the diamond tips. The hydrodermabrasion, wet microdermabrasion, a procedure similar to microdermabrasion that is called hydrodermabrasion or again wet microdermabrasion is gaining popularity. This non-invasive and non-irritating procedure combines, you guys, mechanical and liquid exfoliation with serum penetration and hydration via a machine similar to the closed loop system as found with a crystal microderm machine. Serum is expelled through a handpiece that has interchangeable tips. In the initial stage of the treatment, the handpiece is used with a abrasive, abrasive tip, okay, that comes into contact with the skin to provide a deep cleansing. Uh, extractions and exfoliation action. The handpiece then uptakes the used serum and deposits it in a collection jar to be discarded after the treatment. The tip is then changed out to focus on deposition and penetration, okay, of a specific targeted serum, such as a growth factor or maybe a, uh, something that's brightening, as well as serums to soothe and hydrate the skin, okay? This treatment can also be followed by LED or microcurrent, for additional aging benefits. The benefits of this technology is that it provides reliable exfoliation without the drying effect of the microdermabrasion or the harshness of some chemical peels with the added benefit of extended hydration following the treatment. So yes, I do believe that the hydroderm, hydrofacial, has in a way taken over your typical um, crystal or diamond microdermabrasion machines. So I hope that explains that well. All right, so again, we're on page 656, timing and technique. So microdermabrasion treatments are uh, quick 30 minute services that can be offered alone or as part of a facial. So yes, you can have a microdermabrasion facial or if someone wants to come in just to get the microderm alone, you can. And again, it can be a quick 30 minute service, okay? Um, because microdermabrasion can be somewhat drying to the skin, a quick hydrating and or a nourishing gel or a sheet mask can be added as part of the microdermabrasion treatment, okay? It's definitely a good option. Highlight and put a star next to the following. Technique plays a vital role in creating optimal outcome with the microdermabrasion machine. So proper use of the handpiece, rate of the crystal flow, and vacuum setting all contribute to a successful treatment. The treatment is performed in the area of stretched skin between the thumb and pointer finger, also called the action zone. Other techniques can be used to stretch the skin but it is imperative to do so to avoid skin damage and to gain optimal exfoliation results, okay? So the number of passes used during the treatment will be determined by the client's skin type and condition, okay? The presence of arrhythmia and how the client tolerates the treatment. Typically, passes consist of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal directional applications, and you guys can see it on the picture there on page 657. 
The cross uh, hatching as like, I call it a basket weaving method involves using only two passes can be used to complete the treatment quicker. And it is one of the more popular approaches on sensitive skin types. You may find use you only do one pass, you guys. Okay. Higher vacuum setting, time in uh, contact with the skin, and more passes yield more aggressive treatment. The end point of the microdermabrasion treatment is the presence of erythema. Once the skin turns a slightly pink, then you know that it is time to stop. Reading a manual does not provide instant experience in using this machine. Training and certification are mandatory. Microdermabrasion machines should be used by licensed, trained skincare professionals, which is it, you guys, right? When to use a microdermabrasion. So those who cannot tolerate acid, so if your client is not into getting a chemical peel, they may be the perfect candidates for microdermabrasion, okay? The difference between AHAs and microdermabrasions is that AHAs are chemical in nature and penetrates the epidermis, whereas a microderm is a surface level, okay, mechanical method, um, mechanical method of exfoliation. While microdermabrasion does exfoliate the epidermis effectively as well as stimulate cell metabolism and circulation, the benefit of the acid penetrating the skin and stimulating cell mitosis and cell turnover rate are not achieved with microdermabrasion. Generally, you can think of microderm as a more effective tool for surface exfoliation and your AHAs as a more effective below the surface, okay? That's a perfect way to put it. Using both peels and microderm in a treatment series is a common practice. Effects of microderm, okay? Microderm can be used to diminish the following conditions. Sun damage, pigmentation, open and closed comedones, fine lines and wrinkles, enlarged pores, and coarsely textured skin. It's awesome for textured skin. In addition to the typical exfoliation benefit, the vacuum mechanism stimulates cell metabolism and blood flow. Contraindications and precautions for microderm, okay? Again, recent cosmetic surgeries, laser resurfacing, chemical peels, recent injectables. So pretty much the exact same as the others, okay? Fragile, coporose skin, sunburn. Oh my goodness, why would you even try to get a microderm on sunburn or irritated skin, right? So to prevent skin damage, warn your clients to avoid sun exposure, excessive sweating, scrubs, rubbing, depilatories, waxing, benzoyl peroxide, all of that, okay, is a no. Do not use microdermabrasion so aggressively that the client is uncomfortable. Like this service, you guys, should not hurt. If you are hurting your client, that means something is wrong. Perhaps the suction is too strong, okay? Once the skin shows, again, arrhythmia or retinas, this is considered the end point of the procedure. To avoid eye damage or breathing in crystals during the microdermabrasion, uh, you guys need to wear protective eyewear and a protective mask. Clients must use protective eyewear and keep eyes closed at all times. Avoid getting crystals in the client's mouth, nose, or ears, okay? Um, highlight and put a star next to the following. Improper use of microderm can cause hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. It can also lead to sensitivity and other problems. Any strong exfoliation procedure requires sun abstinence, okay? So, and daily use of sunscreen.